Well, hello, my friends. Welcome to the Artist Next Level podcast. Super happy, super excited to be here with you once again. Today, I'm here with my good friend, Drew Harris. Uh, we're going to be talking about the artist support systems. And this is a special episode, too, because we have a special guest coming and joining us in just a few minutes. So it's going to be good. Resources, inspiring interviews, business practices, and practical advice to take your art career to the next level. Join Sergio Gomez in today's Artist Next Level and get ready to take control of your career. Today, we're going to talk about you know, this idea of as artists, we need support systems. We need you know, to be part of something. Um, you know, when you become an artist, you sign up to something quite unique because for just about any other profession out there, if you become a doctor, you'll be working with a team of doctors. If you're a graphic designer, you'll become working with other designers or printers or other people. You know, if you are a lawyer, you'll be working with a team of other attorneys. So, you know, it's very unique profession that of the art in mm-hmm. the, the, the day you walk in your studio and you realize this is it. <laughs> it's just me. <laughs> so, Drew, I'm sure you have been there many times, just as I have. Oh, yeah. Every artist that's listening today. Well, and I think also, too, you know, if we think back, you know, in our education days, we were within a, with other students. We're within a community. We have those two or three or four years, whatever you're doing in university or college or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then they say, okay, so here's your graduation certificate. Then goodbye for now. Go. And then all of a sudden you're sitting, you know, the next day you're sitting at home going, what do I do now? <laughs> so yeah. yeah, it's a, it's a, um, it's a, it's a challenge. You, you know, you're immediately thrown into sort of isolation. Mm-hmm. And so you, the group is very important. Absolutely. Yeah. And you and I, be, uh, you know, come from a graphic design, advertising agency model where you know, you're working with an art director or you are the art director or you are That's the right. team. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it, you kind of bounce ideas back and forth. You know, you have other people to give you feedback, right? And give you input on what you're doing. And uh, it's so valuable to have that as a professional, you know, to have the input of others, particularly people that you trust or who are also um, in the same field that you're at so that so that you can find those blind spots that we often have in our, in our career. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, also the, just through osmosis, you know, being with someone, being with a group of people, and it's not just the input that is, you know, basically, you know, targeted at whatever you're designing. You could be talking about, you know, weather or hiking or something like that. And you start to see this sort of, you know, association to outdoor activities. Mm -hmm. You know, you could think, uh, you know, how many times have we worked in design agencies where, you know, we would spend a Friday night with these individuals and we wouldn't be talking work. Right. So it becomes a social circle and that social circle is so important Mm -hmm. until, you know, and then we get into our, our creative lives as painters and artists and we're left alone sort of in our thoughts, you know, for, for long periods of time. So uh, it's really good to have this social uh, bounce back, you know, Uh, and, you know, artists are so creative in their ways uh you know and, and often have outside interests like cycling or you know right. hiking or going to museums and that kind of thing so you join up in that kind of context as well fantastic mm-hmm. yeah. and, and, and it's also i always feel like you know this idea of the support system or the uh uh you know engaging in a critique with somebody else or allowing for somebody else to critique you or mm-hmm. being part of that inner circle that you're in you know it, it's like a double edged sword right right because it puts you you know it puts you also on the uh, microscope of somebody else <laughs> yeah it can be nerve-wracking can it <laughs> absolutely yeah. absolutely oh yeah and so i think today you know we can really dive in deeper into this idea of artist support systems how do we do it? You know, the mm. different things that we can do. And today we're going to invite a friend of ours to the conversation. Uh, Joan Collins, she is an artist based in Arizona. She has exhibited widely, beautiful yes. abstract painter um, that, uh, you know, her work has been shown also in many galleries, most recently in New York, and also uh, during Art Basel at Scope Art Fair. So we're super excited to bring her here 
with us in that and uh, have a, a great little mini support system here within this podcast today. So all our friends are in for a treat. Yes, indeed. All right. So let's invite uh, Joan to join us. Hey, Joan, good to see you. How are you? Hey. Hello, Joan. That is my two favorite artists. Uh, well, my support system virtually. <laughs> yeah. Well, you do. Welcome. Welcome to our podcast. This is fantastic. You know, I've, you know, as you know, I've admired your work for, you know, a couple of years now since meeting you. And I know Sergio knows you well. So, uh, you know, it's really exciting to have you here and, and uh, you know, a general talk about what you do. <laughs> yeah. I'm thrilled. Yeah, uh, John, uh, you know, one one of the uh, things that kind of uh, brings us together is, of course, uh, through the Art Next Level program, where that's where we uh, met you, and then through also the one-on-one that you had conversations with Drew as well. So you're already, uh, you know, uh, also uh, informed of, on this idea of artist support systems, right? And things that you have done yourself as an artist and how you perhaps have also helped other artists too along the way. And uh, today we're going to chat a little bit about that. But before we talk more into that topic, I would love for our friends who do not know you. Uh, they already know Drew and I for quite a bit. <laughs> we do a lot of chats <laughs> together. But uh, for our friends who do not know you, uh, John, tell us a little bit, bit more about your art, what inspires your work, and uh, you know where you are in your art career right now. Wow. I mean, that's just... Anyway, I'm so excited to be here. And I, uh, I have some tea with me, so cheers to you both. <laughs> and we have our... Vitamin C water, yeah, my tea yeah. there. There yeah. we are. We're all we're all hydrated. <laughs> awesome. Um, it's always nice to share with <laughs> with friends. Um, but no, yeah. Um, so my art really is focused on the wilds of nature, and I always say that my art evolves like the wilds evolve. Um, and I I have a, a career that I've led in the environmental um, you know area. So I've, I'm all about sustainability and, and consulting in that industry. And I've traveled extensively because of that job. Um, and so there's really a crossover between the work that I do there and the environment, um, as well as getting into the environment and painting that. And so um, so yeah, so that's really kind of my my jam. That's that's my thing. <laughs> the, the, so, tell me how. Yeah. It, oh, sorry. But, tell me how this idea of the environment, you know, began to also bleed into your work as an artist. At what point in your career, said my passion for the environment and what I'm doing to, uh, uh, you know, bring awareness of what's happening to the planet and my art, which sometimes could be like a, an opposite thing. Yeah, I think when, when for you became the one thing. That's such a great question. It's hard to say because I feel like it's always been such a, a branch of me. I don't know. That's kind of corny in a way, but um, you know, I grew up with a family that was just so inspired by nature. You know, we were always out camping, hiking. You know, doing doing everything um, in in nature. And I found myself as I was traveling for work that I was trying to find time to fit in to go beyond the bounds, you know, find places I could go that were, uh, you know, in the rugged wilds. And, um, and I started sketching. Um, I, I've kept a sketchbook for years. I have tons and tons of sketchbooks of, you know, that time. Um, and, and then I remember at one point I was also doing some figurative work and I took my work to a gallery and I had some that was of the landscape and some that was of the figurative. And they told me I needed to choose. Um, so it was kind of, I would say it was a little bit forced on me. In fact, I still take like figurative art classes and sketch because I feel like it's like my little sneaky like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Sure. And then a very important part of, of all sort of art elements is that yeah. figure of you know, keeping the drawing yeah. in your hand and your skills mm -hmm. operating. Right. And really, to me, the landscape is just a figure, kind of on its side. Otherwise, you know. Yeah, true. That's a that's a great way of <laughs> of saying it. Yeah. 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 That's brilliant. Yeah. So, um, so I chose, and I decided to focus and get really good. Um, and I just have continued to abstract it, and I take a lot of, um, I make a lot of my own tools. So from nature, so I'm always picking up things. Um, you know, and using that in, in my art practice. In fact, it's so sweet. Like I've had 
friends and artists actually send me things in the mail. Isn't that great? You know, travels that they've they've had or, you know, whatever. So, yeah, so I feel, I mean, they just make, nature makes the most amazing marks in nature and on your painting, you know. Absolutely. Speaking of, it, so so you are, you're in Scottsdale, Arizona, mm -hmm. which is a fairly dry part of America. Yeah. You know, um, so have you, is this your, uh, is this your birthplace in the Arizona area? No, I actually, I grew up in the Midwest. Um right. Yeah, so it's just kind of a funny story, but we went back and forth between Arizona. My dad taught at Arizona State, so oh, well, right. Yeah, yeah. My our grandparents were in Columbus, Ohio, so um, so we went back and forth, um, and we spent our summers in Columbus, and then we, you know, came to Arizona. Um, so that was kind of my my life. I had I had all of the seasons, you know, in Ohio, and then I yeah. got the beauty of the desert here. So and I've also the desert. Sorry, the the desert really plays an important part of your work. It does, and, you know, in oh, your coloring, yeah. uh, in your marks, uh, in the sort of natural and organic. Mm -hmm. uh, you can feel the desert <laughs> uh, in your work, which is which is why I was always sort of drawn to your work. I know Arizona, I know Scottsdale from yeah. primarily my business days, but I didn't have a chance to actually go out from Scottsdale. And see, you know, the the sort of the arid areas which you, of course, venture out into. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's really nice to see it through your art. So, yeah, and then uh, the tools, the tools I think are are fabulous. You know, uh, the fact that your friends are now sending you, yeah. you know, interesting tools to use in your yeah, work. One, one of my artists. Oh, friends, look at that! Look at that! She said she was at lunch, and this fell from you know, a palm tree. And so she packed it up into a, into an envelope and sent it to me. And I mean, it's that great. See the, awesome. you can see the paint. Uh, I saw one of your Instagram reels where you are painting with a stick, like a long uh -huh. stick with ink and then creating some really interesting marks on your painting. That is pretty cool. It does. It's just amazing. I think I spoke you. about this, you know, yeah. back in, in October, I think. We did. Yeah. Uh, when I, I was in Canada actually in, in mm -hmm. Lani sort of environment. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and we, we had our, we had a, a session together Yeah. and we talked about using organic, uh, instruments in our work, you know, whatever we could find to make that, you know, that perfect mark or that unique yeah. mark. So clearly you did that and you went ahead and you did even more of that, which is. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. I mean, I've done that for years, the mark making. Um, I actually, I think I was, I think I want to say that the, the nexus of me using tools that you can find started when I went to an art workshop in Shirk in Ireland. So hey. you also see a lot of C in my work as well. I think anything that's a wide open space is open game for me, you know, in terms right. of inspiration. Um, but the first day of the workshop, um, this artist said, uh, Magella O'Neill Collins was one Man. of the instructor, and then there was another Cora Collins. Um, but you know, they both said, "Go down to the sea and find things, yeah. you know, and bring yeah. them and make marks." So, like here, I still have this. this. Is one of my favorite ones. It's um blue rope, you know, and I just tied it on. Like I found these both down at the sea, and then you know, you use it to make marks. Anyway, um, so that's kind of when it started. And this is perfect uh -huh. because last week in the episode prior, we talked about mm -hmm. materials. So oh, no, now we talked about now, materials. We're talking about materials yeah. uh, again, you know, and it's, so then, well, it's such an integral part, isn't it? Really? It is. But then when yeah. you and I spoke, Drew, um, which we've had a couple of sessions, which have just been amazing, and I'd love to get more into that. Mm. But um, what you said was, well, not why not? Like you're bringing you're bringing nature into your studio. Why not bring your studio into nature essentially? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and so I did, cause you told the story. I think you just recently told the story about, um, you know, how your art was outside and, and kind of That's right. what happened when it rained and right. Those happy accidents, the you know, the, that went over the, you know, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Well, so yeah. And that, that, you know, can lead us into a whole other conversation mm -hmm. about allowing, you know, stepping aside from our mm -hmm. control of a uh, of an artwork and Sergio would know this well uh, you know it very well and I and I do as well and it's through trial and error really. mm -hmm. 
And when it happens, it's amazing mm-hmm. because then it just, this bulb goes off in the head and says, now I can use this. So now we start yeah. experimenting and building upon that. Yeah. You know, Sergio and his work does it, you know, how, how he proceeds and he starts to see things that are sort of happy accidents. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, in our college days when we're all together, you know, that's a common phrase, you know, the happy accident. You know, things uh-huh. happen for a reason and then you think, well, it's an accident, but now it's actually changed the sort of direction of my career in a way. Yeah. So I think, uh, yeah, it's a really important part of, you know, and here we are, we're talking about, you know, methods and, you know, mark making and that kind of thing. Yeah. So it's a really a good continuation of our discussion. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. I really appreciate yeah. that kind of continued nudge to look at it a little bit different way. Although I will say when I was out on the trail and I'm hauling my, you know, I've got my canvas board with me and I'm looking for little places that I can lay it down, you know, behind a rock that the ranger won't come and take it away overnight. You know? Do rangers come along and, and say no art making? Well, we sure didn't. I was able to enter the desert. It. Fortunately, I've hiked those trails <laughs> enough that I knew all the kind of the quiet spaces. You know? Right. Well, do you take a now? Do you take a camera with you and and take photographs of your environments and then work from those at all, or is this really spontaneous and sort of intuitive rather than replicating yeah. something? Yeah, I think like after our discussion and when I did that, I didn't really photograph it because I just mm. no, I just kind of wanted it to be between me and the I don't know. There's so, yeah, there's so much you want to show, and then there's other stuff. But maybe down the road, I I will. Um, I'm heading. I'm actually. I'm. I go back to Ireland every summer, oh, and nice. um, yeah. And so I'm gonna take. I think I'm gonna take some rolled canvas and see what I can yeah. do with the yeah. surf, you know, and the seaweed. And like, I'm I'm super excited. I actually rented a workspace at an art center in West Cork um, for a week. Um, so well done. I, yeah, so I'm excited to. So I might photograph some of that. <laughs> mm, that's great. And uh, John, I would like to ask you this question. Uh, about, I keep coming back to uh, you know your your experience in the environmental space and uh, how much that informs your work. And I don't know many people who who are a specialist in that field as you are. Uh, except for when I read a newspaper or something yeah. like that, right? <laughs> but uh, yeah. I'm really curious to know, you know, in that space and then comparing that to the artist world, you know, the difference between both things. Like, I assume that in the environmental space, you work also, you have a, a, a bigger support system, I would say, just by notion of being part of that scientific mm. community, yeah. data-driven, research base. You know, you have access to that, and I assume you... You talk with others in your field about that compared to the artist, right? That works in the studio by yourself. Uh, I would love to hear your, your idea on that. That's so interesting. I mean, I always say my story is is kind of one of, I mean, it was very rare for a woman to be in my industry when I first started. So I had to be very buttoned up, um, you know, so to speak, right? Um, and I focused a lot of my career and then I had kind of this whole other side of myself. And for a very long time, I didn't share it with I did the two worlds didn't meet. Right. Um, and then I was um I spent almost two months in Maui and I was working with a client there and and every once in a while I would go over to Hawaii where the kind of the parent company was. Um and there was a um one of the the kind of executives that I was working with um was very kind and as I was asking her questions about herself in her office, she had several photos, beautiful photos of the island, and she had all kinds of beautiful art. And I just had to ask, you know, okay, tell me about this. Um, and it turned out her husband was a photographer, and they had got they had embedded themselves into the art world a lot. And so she offered on one of my days off to take me around and introduce mm-hmm. me to these artists. And I suddenly mm-hmm. kind of felt this like, wow. Um, it's okay to talk about my art because there are people living these multiple worlds all the time. And then the next thing you knew, I was actually inviting clients instead of going to like 
a happy hour, I was inviting them to go to a show, you know, in San Antonio or, and it was amazing, you know, the people that would show up. And so I really did feel like my world started to blend. And there are people that play guitars in coffee houses after work. And, you know, and so suddenly like the conversations became much more intimate. Well, intimate's not the right word, but you know what I mean? Um, personal, like, and who doesn't want to do business with someone that, you know, that you, like, it, there's a bond there, right? Like you, there's of course. Well, it's called diversity. It's, you know, diversity yeah. of the character. You know, we, you know, we're in business. We don't have to be, you know, entirely 100% business minded all day. Mm -hmm. We do have other lives. Right. And, you know, most of us are sort of, you know, I think a lot of us are driven to be creative, mm -hmm. to take, you know, the stresses of our work and put that aside and then go and be creative and do something. And I think a lot of our colleagues, yeah, at least in my experience, and probably in Sergio's as well, mm -hmm. they tend to look at us and go, ah, you artsy types. You exactly. Know? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah. But deep down, what they're saying is, you know, ah, I wish I could be like you. <laughs> yeah. You know, and it was because of our adventure, because of our adventurous spirits yeah. and, uh, you know, our, our willingness to sort of expand, then, <clears throat> excuse me, the, um, you know, the others see it and say, oh, you know, I've got a camera. Uh, I've got a canoe. You know, I've got to, and then, and then the next thing you know, now you've got like-minded people within your environment doing the same thing as you are. Yeah. And it's a, it's a nice sort of cleaning away of the business mind. And now you're all working together uh, as a group and sort of like-minded. Yeah. And now there's much more to share. And I think it's a really great, uh, a great incentive <clears throat> that you, you know, took them to museums and to galleries and. You know, and yeah. and your your colleague took you into Maui and you know around the island. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. So yeah, that's that's an expansion of the mind. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and right. the support system, right? Which is what yeah. you were asking about because it is a very quiet kind of. It can be a lonely experience to be an art, right? Definitely. I love it because I'm, I interact with people so much with my work, but. Um, but yeah, I think it's it's amazing, and I think it's it's kind of a nice it's like a kind of a nice open space or pause for them as well to bring yeah. them to the world. And now I feel like I have such support, you know, on both fronts. Um, I don't know. It's an it's an it been an interesting journey. <laughs> That's good, and it, it is you know I think this is also super uh, uh, important for many of our friends who may be listening too, because a lot of times. Uh, you know, many artists who also may come from other fields, you know, we tend to see things like opposites. So this is my art life, yeah. my other gig or my other job, yeah. my, my day job or whatever, or, or I'm in the transition of mm -hmm. from this full-time or then part-time to my career. And sometimes it could be really a heavy load to carry to feel like, you know, oh, I'm less of an artist because I'm not a full-time per se between quotes, right? Yeah. But mm. it's so, so inspiring to hear your story and, and um, the trio was here, you know, represent multiple, multiple things that we have done in our careers and uh, how each thing, you know, when you embrace it and you, you say, you know, this is who I am, you know, it becomes mm -hmm. to, uh, an asset versus an obstacle. It, yeah. it uh, helps you to, to uh, bring more in your work based on your experience, right? Because this is, this is part of me. And, and as you said, you know, then bridges, I think exactly. there's a bridge I there. That word. Yeah. I love yeah. That word. Yeah. It bridges yeah. both things versus, versus a, uh, a gap, you know, in between yeah. a bridge. I love that. I think that's good. Well, and I think also too, you know, if you, if, as I recall, you know, they would all, uh, when I, when I left the design industry in the mid eighties, I was, I was talking about being creative. I was talking about, you know, we were in a creative industry anyway, so it was pretty natural to talk yeah. creative ideas, and, you know, outside the, that design center. But when I started saying, you know, I'm going to do an exhibition or I'm going to do paintings, all of a sudden, you know, <laughs> now that, you know, what it for, it'd been for years is how you art types, you know, oh, you're painting, but you, you know, you're a designer, you're not a painter. And then all of a sudden, now I was doing an exhibition and I was kind of validated by this. And now my colleagues were all saying, hey, we're going to Drew's show tonight. <laughs> yeah. and, 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 you know, all of a sudden, yeah, all now that we... I'd bridged, I'd bridged over this sort of 
<laughs> misconception or because they, they weren't the types to go to galleries. Yeah. Now, all of a sudden, they were being invited to a gallery <laughs> you know, to have a glass of wine and look at my art. And you think, and then, you know, they'd come back and say, all of a sudden, now I became the painter <laughs> and sort of part time designer. Well, <laughs> yeah. That's how they, and that's, but that in itself was a catalyst for me to move full time into yeah. making art because I had so much support from my business people. Yeah. You know, the business friends and, and that I think took, you know, when one person does it like yourself, Joan or Sergio or myself or whichever, when we do it, it gives a credence to, you know, being able to go off and do it ourselves. You know, we say, well, you know, if Drew can do it or if Joan can do it, maybe I'll do something. <laughs> Yeah, you know, and I think that there's a, there, that's that's very valid, and it's really important as far as you know living creative lives, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and I think no, yeah, and I think people, I mean, I think we all admire, and we we like to say, oh, you know, that person chasing his or her dreams, you know, absolutely. Yeah. You know, and this is the other thing, you know, I just gotta bring this up. I've always thought that, you know, with with automation and with you know, computerization and AI mm -hmm. and so forth. A lot of individuals midlife or, you know, into their sort of fifties and so forth, they might've worked, uh, I'll just use an example. They yeah. might've worked for Ford, for example, uh, you know, on the line and they had a very secure job. They have, you know, their houses paid for, their children have been educated and they find themselves retrenched, right? And oftentimes, what else can they do? They, they can't go to another auto line. They can't really. So what they have to do is they have to look at themselves and say, what am I creative at? What am I good at? And a lot of them will take photography or they'll do painting. Right. Uh, a lot of the members of art next level have gone from a certain industry and now have taken up full-time careers as artists. And I think it's the most likely scenario that if you get, you know, you retire or you decide to change your career re through retrenchment or whatever, you end up being creative and that can, that can make, you know, you can be doing like knitted doilies for toilet, <laughs> uh, but it's creative, right? Yeah. yeah. And so we, we take our business experience. We have our success, you know, as in we have the home, we have a, you know, security. And now we can be creative. I think everyone goes into this eventually. Yeah. And then I think it's because, you know, Joan, you make a stand and you start showing your art. You start to travel. Uh, and then all of a sudden, they're, you know, your colleagues are saying, well, you know, I'm verging on retirement or I, I would like to leave the business in a way and do something creative like Joan. Yeah. And so there's that group influence you are influencing so many individuals uh and you don't even know it i mean they're all noodling it around in their heads with their you know wives or husbands at home thinking you know i'd like to do photography <laughs> and the next thing you know they're putting a show on and you are going to the show you know to support them mm -hmm. sort of a really beautiful natural cycle that is yeah 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 i just so, uh, yeah I, I, I just see kind of this, um, I don't know what the right word is, but like confluence of problem solving, right? Like mm. in my work, I'm solving these big problems. Like how are you, how are we going to be this carbon free, you know, sustainable earth in the future? Wow. And yet in my art, I'm having the same, you know, same solution solving. Like how am I going to connect, you know, this, this, uh, object or this shape with this color, whatever um and, and message and, and message. i love abstract art and i often feel like sometimes there doesn't have to be an answer right it's just an instinct mm. or whatever and there's optimism um and so i i feel like that confluence of ideas like if people are really like worried in a meeting or something i keep thinking there has to be a third answer it doesn't have to be yes. this flat, right there's there's another um, but anyway, I could, but no, no, I, I agree fully. You know, I think what you, 
what you're doing is you're solving a problem, showing your work, uh, do wor working on your work. You, yeah, you may not have a definitive answer, but you're solving a problem that is inherently sort of wider than you, you know, yeah. and expands wider into your environment, to your business life, home life. And I think other people see that too. They see that you have found a solution, even though there is no real apparent solution there. They know something about your work has actually created a, a solution for a bigger problem or a bigger issue, put it that way. I hope so. Thank you, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what I admired in your work. And I think you're also bringing, and let's face it, I mean, you're bringing, you're bringing beauty to, you know, an environment that's not so beautiful at the moment, you know? We, the world that is sort of racked with all of these concerns and worries and environmental issues and stuff, you are bringing some ho sort of hope and positiveness. And I think that's really, that comes through in your work. So we're doing our part, aren't we? Mm -hmm. And Sergio does the same. We're not. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> uh, John, you mentioned, uh, you know, as, as you were talking about uh, the environment you were talking about, also your studio practice. Uh, it was interesting to me that said, you know, in the in the environment field, we we are, you know, are trying to find a solution. You said we said in the studio, I am trying to find a solution. Oh, right? The, the yeah. member says I. Oh, I'm and, so busted. But uh, so here's the question I have, you know, as because I think that's beautiful. Uh, that happens to all of us, you know, in the studio. I am trying to find solutions to my problems, to the things, but then. I call Drew, say, hey, Drew, I'm working <laughs> on this. You know, the, you know, I'm having this issue, I'm having this problem, and then we, we work together, right? That mm -hmm. I become we. And in your case, John, you know, the same, you know, and for others, mm -hmm. you know, when I become we, that's what, at the point where we, we said, I need support, I need a community, I need to be part of something Fantastic. that goes, turns I into we. So yeah. let me do, like, for example, and maybe it's a question for both of you. You know, John, when you, uh, when you, uh, um, sign up for the uh, session with Drew to talk yeah. about, you know, your uh, particular question so that it became a we versus an I. Tell me a little bit, uh, you know, kind of about that experience for both of you, you know, in uh, in Quantic question you're talking about. Yeah. Do you want me to go first, Drew? No, absolutely. You're our guest. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, you're making me just feel like family here, so thank you. Well, know. it's our attention. <laughs> Um, I mean, I think, so I was really nervous to talk to Drew because he's this big, big deal, you know? Um, and, and so I, I mean, and just kind of was in awe of his work and everything, but he just immediately like just brought it down artist to artist, which was fantastic. Um, but I think of the sessions that we had, the main thing was, I felt like he was like a touchstone. Um, and he, he really, he, he kind of reflected back to me the my own like kind of mystery and, and, um, you know, like where, where I was with my art and it was something I couldn't see. I couldn't see it. And it, the point right there. he made me see it <clears throat> and it just, it kind of infused this new, I really, it was at a point where I really, I think that's probably why I reached out. I really needed that kind of, it was like an elixir, you know, <laughs> and it just kind of restored me and it made me feel like, yeah, like there is, there is that, you know, that, that special piece that I, that drop that I put into my work, but I couldn't see that. And so I was so appreciative. And then of course we, kind of set forth then on the path of once I could accept what he was saying, you know, then I was kind of like, okay, well, let's go forth. Like I had a path to follow. Yeah. And then yeah. that's like, that's like supported by listening to, you know, you Sergio and all the, I mean, every day when I get on the treadmill, I'm listening. <laughs> you, know? you must be tired of me already. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm not ready for the, you know, the next building a body of work, you know? Challenge, yeah. But see, I see, and I think that this is also, you know, you you are inspired by listening to Sergio, for example. Uh, it's a little things, and it's reciprocal. You know, when I speak to you, or I speak to Sergio, uh, and I think Sergio feels, well, he just mentions that, 
you know, sometimes we don't see the forest for the trees, as it were. Yeah. And that's an environmental theme, you know. <laughs> it, and it's just so perfect because we can't see the problem yeah. because the problem is right in front of us. And then once it's defined by a third party or someone else or even a group environment, mm -hmm. you start to see, you know, absolutely they're right. You know, and maybe I have to go down this this path and try something that was so obvious to them, but not to me. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's the that's the beauty of this of of working together as a group or individually, uh, one on one, or the three of us working together and having this talk. This is this is precisely, in my opinion, this is exactly what we're trying to do: is to create a dialogue. Because after this conversation today, I know I will sit up for my entire day, which is I'm a day ahead of you. <laughs> uh, I will sit all day today and I will go through our conversation and something will come of it and something I'll take into my own work and into my own practice. So there. Ooh, what is it? I want to know for both of you. Am I allowed to ask you more questions? <laughs> you can ask, of course, you can. And, and actually, yeah. Yeah, and actually, uh, you know, before the episode ended, I wanted to also ask you to ask us anything you want to. So. Yeah. <laughs> what are your idea? Like you, you and I talk, uh, and why I really enjoyed our talk. First of all, I was in a really good frame of mind. Yeah. I was in Canada. I was in my home. I was out. I and I recall it so well. I was sitting at this desk. The leaves were changing. Through the, that's right. And I was looking out from this desk window in northern ontario looking out into a pasture of garden like homemade garden and then just nothing but uh, maple trees beyond it and it was and it was so obvious that like i was looking at your solutions and they were sitting right in front of me you know and i was able to just say why don't you just take tree branch why don't yeah. you use the environment why don't you use things you know, uh, it's not a, it's not an uncommon thing either, you know, to take things from our gardens or the trees or environment and start using it as an application. But I think also we spoke of one of the things was distance, get some distance from your work, yeah. stand back and use a long stick, you know, mm -hmm. with a stick attached to it and then dip that into paint and draw so that it becomes, it's an extension of your hand, but at mm -hmm. a a 20 foot distance or 10. Yeah, I think I was already using about a four foot yeah. stick. Yeah. You need to go eight and like 16. And <laughs> because we use all control, it's like writing your memoir with your left hand or yeah. right hand, whatever your, your opposite hand is, you know, you lose control and there's some beauty in that. There's some yeah. natural beauty in that. And that, so that's, and then when you did it and you started showing it, I was like, wow, <laughs> I'm going to do that. <laughs> and so I started doing it myself, you know, in, yeah. in the little drawings or my sketches and stuff, just holding my pencil and letting do whatever it wants to do. Mm -hmm. So it's reciprocal. It works both ways. And I, this is the beauty of these conversations that we have. Yeah. You know, and we've, we've never met physically. Sergio and I had two years, we'd never met. And we I knew met. what you did the show this summer. It was awesome. <laughs> yeah. Right. It was exactly. really good. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and and, and uh, that's the the point of uh, of the I become we, right? Because when we have those yes. conversations, then all of a sudden my problem becomes Ruth's problem too, and there we're both trying to solve it. Yeah. Right. And that is the beautiful thing. That is the, when the the uh, really things start to shift. And yeah. and sometimes you know, a lot of times I found that also when I talk to uh, Drew or other mentors too, that uh, sometimes. I already have the answer. I already mm -hmm. know the answer, but I just need another voice mm -hmm. to say, to you know what, you're in the right track. Exactly. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. yeah. We always question our own, right? So it's nice to have. Well, I mean, I'll tell you, like, I mean, I have I have a couple of different, you know, groups of, of artists that I connect with every once in a while. And one is a, a group of women and and, um, you know, they were getting to the point seeing me like smoking on Instagram with the challenges and stuff. And I'd be like, you know, well, Sergio said this and Sergio said that, and you know, you you guys can't do your reels this way, and and um, yeah, no. and, and finally, you know, I got to a point where we get on and they said, "What's Sergio saying?" <laughs> <You know? laughs> 
You <laughs> see, and that, that influence eventually just kind of seeps in yeah, into the mindset of these individuals. And that, yeah. and again, you know, and it's all in a positive manner because the, right. the eye becomes weak. Mm-hmm. You know, now you, now you are part of this larger entity. And I think yeah. it's, a, this is just, this is how we grow. You know, we, where I live right now, and I won't make this long, but you know, I had a lot of support here for years and then the, the country changed, mm. the artists changed, the education system changed and became very much insular. So I didn't have that environment anymore uh-huh. where I could bounce off and have groups of people and exhibitions with like-minded people. And, um, and you know, it became political, it became, you know, ethnic, uh, you know, dealing with, you know, uh, different ethnicities. You know, so the groupings, you know, there was this and there was them and me. And we, didn't, we weren't con- connecting. So that's why I went to Sergio and uh, by accident. And now look where we are today. Yeah. I'm much more expanded in my <laughs> brain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and in the summer, you know, uh, we first connected and um, I never imagined that, you know, Drew was going to bring so much to the table, you know, and. Uh, now he's doing so many things with us in the art next level and, uh, you know, working so many things and, you know, we were chatting one day, Hey, why don't, why don't we have, why don't we talk about this topic in the podcast? And then one <laughs> podcast became two podcasts and another podcast and now we're doing it together, you know? And, and it is, it is really when things are organic because you are both you and, and the group or whoever you're working with, mm. you know, have the, the same mentality of not, you know, just give me, but I'm here to also you know, give and provide and, and share of my own experiences and, and expertise. And we all have something to offer, you know, regardless Absolutely. of our experience and regardless of, of, uh, where are we at in our art career, we all have something to offer or something of value. And I think that is, you know, the beautiful thing about, about a community and, uh, you know, the three of us chatting here, uh, when we are done, you know, we'll, I think we'll have a great time, you know, great memory of this conversation. Absolutely. Yeah. And in, in including memories, we're going to have these sort of thought uh, instigators. You know, we're going to have this one thing that you might have said, Joan, that I'll take and I'll sit and, and ponder over today and think, you know, she had a good point there. And I have to apply that in my next work or in what I'm doing today or in the next body of work. Right. So we're, we're kind of like sponges. You know, we're just picking up things that we need in a conversation. Uh, or feeling uh, that color behind you, you know, is, is inspired me already. And I'm thinking that's a possible solution for the picket I have right over there. Uh, you know, I like that red. I like that green. And that would go nicely on there. You know? That that green is like my obsession right now. I can't get away. It's a beautiful green. And again, you know, shows your environment, right? That, that I would associate with, well, two places, probably New Mexico, in Arizona, mm, mm-hmm. that color, I don't know why it just reminds me of New Mexico or, or, mm-hmm. or Arizona, both arid areas. Don't know why that color says that, but <laughs> darn good color. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jen, I would love to ask you, what is exciting you right now in your studio or in your career? You know, if you were thinking, if you were to think we are already in April. You know, almost almost done. You know, we're yeah. looking into spring. Pretty soon, the summer will be here. Uh, what feels good about your career right now? Oh well, you know, I kind of got caught up because you you said it out the at the beginning of the hour. Like I did, I had um, a show in New York, and I was part of a show in New York. Then I went to the Scope in, at Art Basel in Miami, and and then I just was um, uh, put into a show in Houston. So in April. Um, but like, I always have to kind of bring it back to my art. You know, I can get really caught up in the, the shows and like all of that. Um, so what's exciting me right now really is my art. It's making art and just pulling that in. And then knowing that, um, I have some business stuff that I need to do. You know, I, I really want to get some representation um here locally i haven't done that for a while so i I really only focus on that um and then um and then of course i'm looking to the summer to spend a couple Mm. 
Ireland, which is always kind of my well um, beyond the desert. Like it's a balanced desert to see. In fact, yeah. I did a show called that. Yeah. Excellent. That see. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, so I'm looking forward to that time. I spend a couple, uh, one week with a couple of artist friends. Um, Wonderful. They kind of, they take off from their hubbies for the, <laughs> for the week. And, you know, we spend time and we paint and talk about all these things. Um, and they're very remember cool. remember to paint and not just you know have a glass of wine and <laughs> yeah you know, or it was day wine and... involved I must say there's <laughs> some wine and all kinds of good stuff. Oh, you got to do that. You see, then there you go. You've got that yeah. that uh, you need it. as an artist. You need that mm -hmm. right. You need that yeah. time away. I really do. Yeah. yeah. So kind of that restorative. That's like where I fill up. And and yeah. then this time I've never done this before. Renting the space for a week um, in the art in the West Cork um, Art Center. So. That'll be really fun to have a space because usually I'm like plain air. I'm in my hotel room, you know, and you're yeah. trying not to get the paint in the sink. And, you know, you've got your rocks in the bathtub and you've got your paint. <laughs> um, so it's going to be really, really nice. To have a space. And you're in an art center. So you've got other yeah. artists. Other oh, artists. And another like community. The, the, yeah. Dancers. Like the Jubi yeah. Center uh, where Sergio is curator. And yes. that, you know, wow, what an environment you, where you had quite a number of different artists working and there was music, there was, you know, people were there having lunch together. And then all of a sudden, you know, and I came away from that thinking I picked up on all sorts of elements, you know, from the artists that were working there, all new yeah. techniques, you know, and we were kind of like little, as I say, sponges, we kind of go from artist to artist. We take what we need and, you know, we build friendships too. And if we have questions about that particular thing that that artist is doing, you know, you've spent a week with them. Now you, you're part of their family. Now you can phone them and say, you know, you were working on something <laughs> and then ask you about that. And then, and that is what we're talking about today is the idea is that I you sitting in your, uh, you know, sitting in your uh, hotel room with rocks in your, in your bath <laughs> now becomes, you know, three or four people sitting in your hotel room, <laughs> with rocks in your bathroom. <laughs> well, I'm not all in my bathtub. That would have. <laughs> yeah, that's... yeah, that would be hard. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Hey, yeah, uh, Joan. So I want to now give you the host microphone, which is represented by this spoon. Okay. Ah. Now you have the word. Ask us anything you want. If you were to ask Drew a question, whenever you want to ask, or, or me a question, or one of you get hydrated for this. In the meantime, we'll uh, drink a sip. Okay. Yikes. Um, wow, this is a, well, let's go back to the idea of mystery. Okay. How, what, because I believe both of your work ha has that element of mystery kind of, mm. you know, I think like it's, there's definitely a sixth sense in there somehow. I don't know how else to describe it. What, um. Where do you go for that? How do you bring that into your art? Who who you want to ask first? <laughs> nah, you can ask Sergio. He'll answer. Uh, Sergio. All right, I'll, I'll take that. Uh, I I love that. Question. The boss? I love that question. You know the question of mystery and, and what brings it and how we bring it. In my case, I've always been interested in the gap between things, in the gap between day and night, in the gap between up and down. In my paintings, a lot of my figures, they're like semi-floating, right? You don't know if they're grounded. So, you know, also this gap between the birds in the sky and, and the worms on the earth, right? You know, those gaps in between is mystery. Because it's easy to say, I'm from the left or I'm from the right, right? Or I'm from mm. above or below. Mm. But that middle ground, which uh, is so vague, uh, yeah. that's what I find to me that sweet spot yeah. of... Uh, of mystery because I don't understand it myself very well. So yeah. my work is a search for that, you know, those in-betweens. Like my figures, a lot of times, like, is it a male or a female, you know? Mm -hmm. I did a painting where, um, which I think is one of my best paintings, it's, it's old painting, where um, there's a figure in dark, uh, like, silhouette. Uh, it has wings, so people see it as an angel, but then on the hands are like bones. So it looks more like a skull, which then refers to death. So is it, is it 
is it uh, an angel or is it an evil, you know, uh, presence? And then mm. in one hand, there's a butterfly, which is, uh, again, the silhouette of a butterfly, but uh, it looks like a butterfly, but actually use a moth. So when we think of a moth, it's ugly. When we think of a butterfly, oh, it's so beautiful. So I yeah, love those. Yeah, those. those You're so clear designers. on that. You're so clear on that. I'm impressed by that. I I wonder how you came to that. Did that just come, and then, you know, or is it your art as you were exploring it, you were able to then like reflect and say, yeah, that's. I I think the art is my own trying to find and search for that mm -hmm. space. Yeah, I, it's not like that. I'm trying to find an answer because I don't think that it's not an. No, an answer, but I'm just trying to find those spaces, you know, mm -hmm. in my work. And, uh, and you know, some people catch on those, some don't, but that's okay. You know, I, I'm glad that you caught it, Jan, and, you know, and uh, yeah. I think you do it. I really do. Um, and I love how you describe it. And I love how you describe it so clearly because I think that's one of the hardest things as yeah. an artist to say it, you know, what, what it is after, you know. Thank you. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to yeah, throw it well. to, to Drew. Yeah. I got the potato. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. Well, you know, I think uh, this, this is something, again, you know, Sergio and I talk about all the time. It's that mystery that we, we have to find. Uh, there has to be some, in order to draw people into your work, there has to be some so sort of question that is not answered. That is something that where they can answer it for themselves. And, uh, you know, Joan, as you and I, and Sergio as abstract painters, the the answer is never quite defined. It's how you feel. It's what it says to you, what it sings to you, right? Mm -hmm. And I always think uh, uh, the most successful work of my work, uh, and any uh, any uh, any artist's work that I, as an abstractionist, if I'm looking at work, and in case my in in my case. What I wanted to do is create a certain uh, sound. I wanted to to have a certain hum to my work. There's a certain vibration in my work. I've talked about this before, and when I know it's there, it often is for other people. You can't define it. There's a subtle hum you cannot hear, but you can feel it. There's something about a feeling, and it can be. Uh, positive, it can be very uplifting, and it can be dark, but it doesn't matter to me because it's it's you know this is this is their interpretation of my work, and so I want to create a mystery so that the the entire painting is not fully answered because a painting needs someone to look at it, it needs eyes on it, right? Mm -hmm. And it's not only my eyes; it's your eyes. You know Sergio's eyes when he's looking at my work. I want him to come up with his own solution or his own answer to the problems that I or to the questions I might have subtly put into that work. And in my case, I do environment, so I leave it loosely based on environment, so that you, as a viewer, can look at it and say, "I get it." You know, in the show I did for Sergio, which was the which was the magnetic north painting. They were all abstract pieces. I didn't point to any one sort of northern thing, but I suggested it. And then so everybody has a story of the north. Uh, that they, they love the north for whatever reason, the cold or the expanse of environment. And that's their answer. That's their answer. But to me, it might be something completely different. To Sergio, it would be something. To you, it would be something different. So that's really what my intention is. It's engagement. I don't want to spell it all out for everybody. I, I love that idea of the home, you know, the, like, the yeah, uh, you know, the vibration. Because uh, as you were talking about it, I was like, okay, what was that home that I heard or I felt the first time I saw your painting some twenty something yeah. years ago? You know, when I walked into that Chicago gallery, and I was confronted by this big red painting, you know, mm -hmm. and I certainly felt something. Here's something that but there is no definitive answer no it's exactly just a feeling. That, and that's the mystery yeah. of it, right well, well the think about rothko you know i yeah. one of the reasons that i sort of adopted this uh and and many of us have is when you uh, have you been to the rothko chapel mm -hmm. either of you 
Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, then that was my first experience in a real gallery, like as a contemporary artist. And uh, I sat there and I was overwhelmed and I couldn't figure out why. Mm -hmm. And I thought, as a painter, that's what I want to do. Mm. I want people to to feel something that they can't identify. And that's that subtle hum. You know, there's a hum there. <laughs> I don't know what it sounds like, you, but it's there. And I think we all do that. You do it very well, John, in your work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because you're creating, it's a very, it's a, you feel your environment in your work. And you can't identify why. And, and Sergio gets the, if I may, mm -hmm. use my critique on your work. Of course. Uh, is that is the crossover between life and an afterlife, the mm -hmm. spiritual side of things, yeah. the uplifting of a spirit mm -hmm. from ground to sky. But you're not you're not in the sky and you're not on the ground. You're somewhere in between, right? And that that I know from knowing you personally, that I know is a, is an important part of your work. So I, but I felt it immediately as soon as I saw it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, both of You're you. Not shy for That's so, why I asked the question because the both of your artwork, not every, <laughs> not every one's artwork does that, you know. But I do feel that that in both of your work. So thank you so much, Bert. Thank Ooh. you. That, that was a hard question. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let's cheer on that one. <laughs> yeah, everybody, <laughs> that was a good one. Mm -hmm. So I'm a. Uh... Yeah, well, that that is good questions. And again, you know, look at this is exactly why we're doing it, right? Mm -hmm. We, you know, we never know where these conversations are going to go. And I, how great is that? It's gone in the direction that we, you know, sort of assumed it might, but we never know. All uh, right, you know, uh, it's kind of like a first date. You know, you're asking questions of people, and you're dialoguing, and it can go really well or it can go really bad. This one. Of course, amazing. <laughs> amazing. I want to tell you, like this is way better. <laughs> but you see, it's all because of you know that the fact that we're open enough to be able to talk about what we do, and it's not all good always. You know, we have the challenges. We're we're isolated a lot of the time, and we need a group. Mm -hmm. and that conversation can go wildly off course, or it can be so wildly accurate that it inspires us for for a decade or more or maybe which, life yeah which it was so interesting how you know as we started to kind of wrap up our conversation for today uh how um you know the pandemic came to change our notion of what a support system what a community could be where mm. i feel that prior to the pandemic you know, we all have our circle of people that we connect with, but the online things were like, yeah, something that maybe you have and you do or something, but it wasn't really, it never felt like the real deal, right? Because we had mm -hmm. every, everything else. All of a sudden, whole world, we're in the middle of a pandemic and the only thing we have is the online thing, you know, the online support system. And how uh, that had totally changed, at least my, or my own perception, a lot of a sudden, the what we had been building at the art next level it totally makes sense you know at that point it's like wow you know to me it was a, a lifeline of support as well you know to connect with other artists to say hey we let's do yeah. a Zoom, you know this week and let's all see what are we doing how are we managing you know this pandemic as artists and uh, all of a sudden um you know this this uh like as drew says you know these people that we had never met in person became yeah. Real companions in our career became real support systems. And how beautiful that is now that we go on the other side and we are going out again and that we are meeting people again and kind of going back to those local communities to also bring along, you know, all the virtual communities or virtual relationships because they are just as good, just as important as the Absolutely. physical ones. And I think we all, you know, in a positive way for as much value the pandemic brought to this world, I think... Um, you know, uh, uh, on the other side now, we can bring in those relationships, you know, and, and, and make something a much beautiful uh, story, you know, of, of what, yeah. what that community could be. So, well, and then one thing I, I would add to that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's sort of a well, sort of strangely weird add on. But, you know, the pandemic, for one good reason, now the whole world knows how artists live. 
Yeah, that is a good point. Uh, you think about it. <laughs> I, now, everybody knows how isolation without a group can be, you know, great or it can make you mad. <laughs> <laughs> so now everybody, all those corporate guys, still have our ears. Uh, right. <laughs> so you know that the fact is, is that everybody got to experience really what an artist goes through. We sit in isolation. We spend a lot of time alone. Yeah. I don't want to be, sound like a cliche, but that's yeah. You know, we do. I mean, we're not painting with our family running around us, and you know, our friends coming over and having dinner while we paint. You know, we <laughs> do it on our own, right? Well, I have done that. I have so, yeah, that. I oh, of course, yeah. And that's even more fun. And that's a whole other story. <laughs> no, so, no, no, totally true. A good observation, you know, the the, yeah. the fact that the pandemic has, has really been, like you say, it's it brought everybody comfortable online and you it built a greater, bigger family, I think. Global. It for me. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah, uh, I, could, I couldn't imagine 10 years ago, I couldn't imagine having to talk to you, Joe, unless I yeah. happened to find you in a book or something. But yeah. now we're all online and we see each other, we can communicate and we get that good feeling and we mm -hmm. start talking to one another. It's nothing but good, I think. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, totally agree. And, and um, you know, kind of after sharing this and I um, uh, think it's the time to land our plane home <laughs> we have a right to our destination i want to uh, say john uh, that is it has been just a wonderful yeah. pleasure to have you here on this chat you know as we wrap up today's uh, session too i would love if you could also share with our friends here uh where can they see your beautiful work online on social media how they can find you and follow you uh so that uh, and also the your upcoming uh show too uh, anything that you want to give us so that our friends can connect with you. Oh, well, thank you. And it's been an absolute pleasure for me as well. So thank you so much. Um, Instagram, I'm at, at art by Joan Collins. Um, I have a website. It's art at blackmountain.com. I used to live at the base of, of Black Mountain. So that's why yeah. that's. Um, and the show that's coming up in Houston is April 5th at the Sawyer Yards um in houston and um and so um there's more information you'll see on instagram and my website so you can you can check that out but um well that's gonna be fast so they just sent me pictures of the art hangings <laughs> 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 <Nice. laughs> very good and if and if you could say you know just a couple of words for our friend who may be listening to this episode and maybe is considering uh you know also going through a one-on-one -on -one session uh, for support or uh, through going through the Art Next Level Academy. You just kind of like one or a couple of words of, of encouragement to somebody who may be on the fence. Like, you know, should I do it? Should I not do it? Is it something really for me? Okay. Um, yeah. I mean, again, like this is an investment in the most important thing that you do all day, you know, all, all week, all year is investing into yourself, your art and your art business. And I have a lot of places I can go to invest in that. I've come to you, Sergio, for Art Next Level, to you, Drew, for the coaching as part of Art Next Level. I listen to you guys on the podcast, but also as a member, um, like I said, every day on the treadmill, you're in my ear <laughs> telling me how to make a reel, you know, how to build a body of work, how what materials work, what they don't. I love the the influencers you bring in on the podcast all of that. And in terms of the coaching, like I said, it's like somebody putting up a mirror to you and helping you see who you really are. And you really, that's, that's like priceless. So. Oh, thank you. And that's a great way to put it really. And I'm, I'm forever in your debt for that one. That's a, you know, the mirror idea is great. That's a great way to explain it. So thank you. Yeah. And it works both ways. That mirror goes both ways. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Totally. Thank you so much, John. Yeah, thank you so thank much, you. my good friend, Drew. I want to also invite all our friends, if you uh, want to take part of the upcoming challenge in April of building a body of work, if uh, this is something that you always wanted to do, or maybe you are in the middle of, it's not that you have to build the entire body of work in April, but rather mm. we're going to work on creating a, a pretty much yeah. as a blueprint, you know, that will help you think about concept, ideas, working on, on the body of work, 
what to do with it when you're done. Because we're really good in the studio, like making the art, but then what do we do with it? You know, how do we get out into the world? How would we do the marketing, the positioning, the selling, the finding opportunities for that? So all that's going to be covered in April. And the way it works is super simple. So I've been getting questions of, okay, how does it work? You know, I, I live here, I live there, you know. So it's really easy. Uh, there's one video session per week. You can watch it at your leisure, at your time, wherever you are in the world. And then mm. uh, we have Q&A sessions, which are live in the group. However, if you cannot attend, no biggie. You know, you can just pre-post your question. We'll answer it, and you can watch the recording at any time. Plus, you get to connect with amazing artists like John. And, uh, yeah, and absolutely. Who are really, really great uh, members of our community. And uh, we are all there to support each other and to help each other out. Because I'm an artist, Drew is an artist, and uh, you know it is it is a a, a good uh, good uh, really uh, energy you know to have their other fellow artists, and we're all working together to have the way. So, thank you, Drew. Yeah, you're most welcome, sir. Thank you to the both of you. Thank you, John, for joining us. Uh, and uh, you know this conversation has just been you know so good for me. So now I can turn you guys off. And go <laughs> and do something that you just gave gave me a great idea for. So right, and if you, you want yes, of course. And if you want to connect with Drew, you can find him on Instagram at Drew Harris Art. Art. And of course, you can find me also at Sergio Gomez Art. Check out also the Artist Next Level program at theartistnextlevel.com. So my friends, thank you for joining us. Do us a big favor. The three of us, Drew, John, and I, would be so excited if you click on that little share button. Share it with your yes. friends. Send it to another artist friend of yours. Say, hey, you have to listen to this chat because it was really good. It was inspiring to me. We will really appreciate that. So thank you, my friends. And we'll see you at the next level. Check out our website at www.theartistnextlevel.com where you will find our podcast library, learn about our upcoming webinars, find resources relevant to your career, and much more. Thanks for listening to today's podcast, and we'll see you at the next level.